Finally, I had the beach house all to myself for an entire month. A summer of sunbathing, parties with friends, and bonfires on the beach was headed my way. I couldn't wait. And the best part? A break from my dad's annoying rules. Hi, everyone. I'm Taylor, the girl who has it all. Everyone knows my name, teachers love me, and I live in the sweetest Oceanside mansion on this side of the panhandle. Everything was falling into place. I'd just finished my senior year. I got accepted into my dream college, and I had a killer party planned at the end of the week. Life was great. My summer dreams shattered like a mirror when I saw a familiar face jump out of a moving truck next door. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. What is what is she doing here? I ducked behind the railing and peered over at a preppy-looking girl walking toward the neighboring house. Her hair clips stuck out like a sore thumb. Whoa, that's Heather Lanigan. I haven't seen her since... Shut up, Troy. She'll hear us. My annoying little brother almost gave us away. Thankfully, I pulled him out of sight just in time. Weren't you guys, like, best friends or something? Why are you being so sketchy? I glared at my brother and crept inside as fast as I could, watching from the tilted blinds. Heather and I went way back, but she moved away when we were 12 and took all her insane drama with her. We used to be friends until she started making my life a living nightmare. More on that later. All week, I was forced to sneak around from room to room to stay out of sight, like I was a burglar in my own house. This was not how I wanted to start my summer vacation. Before I knew it, it was the day of my party. I didn't even realize the DJ had arrived to set up his equipment until the doorbell shot me out of my trance. The guests started showing up, and I wasn't even dressed yet. I threw on the cutest dress in my closet and raced downstairs. Oof, straight into to my boyfriend, James. Careful, babe. What's the rush? Sorry, I'm just a little on edge. My arch nemesis moved in next door a few days ago, and I'm pretty sure she's plotting my demise. You mean the tiny little girl on the swing over there? Sure enough, Heather was outside swinging innocently with a lollipop in her mouth like Lord Voldemort with pigtails. I didn't buy her act for a second. Don't let her size fool you. Um, okay. Should we go dance? Yeah. The music kicked on, and I finally let my guard down. We danced and sang karaoke all night long, having an absolute blast. At one point, I looked out the window again and saw Heather, still alone on the swing set. Maybe I'd been too judgy. I was almost tempted to invite her to the party, when suddenly I heard gasps behind me. Watch out! I spun around and stared just as a light snapped off the railing above. James dove and pushed me out of the way just in time. When I looked back out the window, Heather was gone. I tried to act like it was no big deal. Just a little accident, everyone. No need to stop dancing. But the truth is, I was shocked shaken up. Did Heather do this? Even if she did, I knew there was no way anyone would believe me. After all, no one did the first time she tried to ruin my life. So about that. Growing up, Heather and I were best friends. We loved all the same things. Fashion, parties, the beach, obviously the beach. But we were also straight A students and in all the school clubs. My dad wouldn't let me do anything without adult supervision. So I used to always drag my mom to our hang sessions because she was less strict. And Heather would bring her dad since he'd recently sold his company for like a billion dollars and suddenly had a bunch of free time. Then one day, Heather's dad left. Not long after, my parents got divorced too. Heather's dad moved to Europe to start a new business and my mom moved to the rainforest to find herself. Guessing all she found was bug bites and poor cell service. It was one more thing Heather and I had in common, except not fun like the others. But instead of bringing us closer together, Heather changed. She stopped answering my calls, started playing cruel pranks on me, and even spread a rumor at school that I peed myself. Pro tip, do not drink lemonade with white pants. Learn from my mistakes, people. One day, she started telling everyone I'd ruined her life. And when I stuck up for myself, Heather turned on the waterworks and no one believed me. I understood her being sad. I was sad too, but I couldn't understand why Heather suddenly hated me. Eventually, Heather and her mom moved away. By then, I was honestly relieved to see her go. At least I'd be safe from her pranks. And I was, for a while. But now, she's back. Over the next few weeks, my brand new car broke down, I lost my entire makeup bag in a thunderstorm, and James even started ditching me. This wasn't a coincidence. Heather was ruining my life all over again. I knew I needed proof this time, so I watched Heather like a hawk. One day, James came over to pick me up for a date and found me doing surveillance. Babe, she hasn't said a word to you. You're being paranoid. That's what she wants you to think. Ooh, scary. Watch out for the big bad she-wolf. I considered dumping my mocha latte on James's head, but decided to be mature and punch him in the arm instead. Also, this latte was way too good to waste. Mmm, mocha. I headed out, not waiting for James. I took one step off my porch when suddenly a tidal wave of 
bright blue paint rained down from above, covering me from head to toe. Still think I'm paranoid? Didn't your dad have the house repainted before he left? The painters probably forgot the cans. You live in a dream world of lies and unicorns! I quickly rinsed off and changed so we could make our reservation on time. I wasn't about to miss out on a meal at the most exclusive restaurant in town just because of the wicked witch of the panhandle. When we arrived, I was so excited. But before we could even walk into the restaurant, the hostess came out and stopped us. I'm sorry, miss, but the entire restaurant has been rented out for the evening. What? We had reservations. Someone came and offered to buy out all of the tables. It's out of my hands. I had a sneaking suspicion I knew who that someone was. Before the hostess could stop me, I barged inside and glared at the center table. There she was, seated and sipping her lemonade with that stupid, innocent smile. Oh, hey, Taylor. My uncle bought the place out for me tonight. Who knew you could do that? It was our first time being face-to-face in six years, and I was speechless. You know, I didn't expect to see you here. You seem more like a fast food kind of girl. But you, James, a pretty boy like you can do better than this trash. At least this so-called trash could get a date eating all by yourself. That wiped a smirk right off her face. For a moment, I felt satisfied until Heather flung a mound of mashed potatoes right at me. This is the second dress of mine you've ruined tonight, you little- Okay, time to go. Before I could slap that snarky grin off her face, James picked me up and carried me out while I screamed and kicked like a toddler. When I got home, I broke down in tears. All I wanted was to have a fun summer, and Heather had ruined everything. What had I ever done to deserve this? There was a knock at my door, and my little brother Troy came in. Hey, you okay? No, Heather is ruining my life again. Have you tried talking to her? Seems like a better plan than avoiding her forever. That gave me an idea. You're right. How can I get revenge if I'm always hiding? Um. I didn't say anything about revenge. Thanks, Troy. You're a genius. Troy was right. It was time to turn the tables. The next morning, I got up bright and early and headed to Heather's favorite cafe. I had a hunch she'd show up eventually. Sure enough, soon she came in to order. I slipped a note to the barista and hid behind some rando's laptop. Shortly after, the barista put her drink on the counter. Double espresso macchiato for horse face Heather. The entire coffee shop started laughing. Heather turned beet red and then looked right at, uh uh-oh, before I could hide. Heather marched right over and dumped her iced coffee on my head. Did you really think you could hide? I could see the tacky dye job from space. I'll have you know that I'm a natural strawberry blonde. Seriously, my hair got lighter from spending so much time in the sun. It's not a dye job. Okay, so that didn't go quite the way I'd planned. I was seriously gonna have to get a new wardrobe with all the clothes Heather was ruining. Next time, I would be more stealthy. Sadly, summer was coming to an end. But the good news is, my university campus was gorgeous. I fell in love in an instant. Even the presence of my arch nemesis couldn't break the spell. On the first day of classes, I had my textbooks, my planner, and a pencil with an adorable pink floofy thing at the end. I was prepared for everything. I noticed a girl was about to sit next to me. Don't even think about it. (laughs) Sorry, I mean, um, I'm saving it for a friend. Why was I yelling at random students? I'm glad you asked. About an hour ago, I'd paid the janitor to delay Heather on her way to the classroom. That way, when she arrived to class, there would only be one seat left. Earlier that day, I'd gone to a hardware store to buy the strongest glue I could find. See where I'm going with this? Unfortunately, Heather did too. When she came in, I tried to play it cool, but I kept glancing at the chair and Heather noticed that she did something truly evil. She did something truly evil. Hey, your name's Kiki, right? Would you mind taking the seat? I'm nearsighted, so I like to sit close to the front. As that girl Kiki came over to take the seat, I panicked. Pranking Heather was one thing, but embarrassing this random girl was another. She was about to sit when suddenly I shoved her out of the way and sat there myself. Sorry, I uh, just realized my great-grandmother sat in this seat when she was my age. It's kind of a sentimental thing. You get it. She didn't get it. But whatever. At least I'd saved her from humiliation. Unfortunately, I couldn't say the same for myself. When it was time to leave class, I tried to stand carefully, but the glue stuck to my jeans and ripped a hole right in my butt. What's wrong? Did you pee your pants again? If I did, this would be the first time. It's hard to come up with a good comeback when there's a giant hole in your pants. All of my pranks were backfiring. Clearly, I needed to make better plans. So this time, I did. I spent all week preparing for the most epic prank ever. I gathered six chickens, 25 jars of honey, glitter, and a human-sized net. Don't ask. Then I hid in a bush with my binoculars and waited for 
Heather to get home. I see you decided to be mature and talk things out. Exactly. Thanks, Troy. I am mature. Troy rolled his eyes and went inside. A little while later, I saw headlights approaching, and Heather pulled into the driveway. Everything was ready. Heather was finally going to get a taste of her own medicine. But when she got out of the car, she was on the phone, and I noticed she was crying. <laughs> you obviously don't care at all. You would have come back by now if you did. Forget it. My hand hesitated on the rope. Heather was in position. All I had to do was pull, and she'd be coughing feathers and glitter for a week. Instead, I approached her. Are you okay? Why do you care? Well, I don't know if you remember, but we used to be friends. Before you ruined my life, you mean? Oh my god, Heather. I have no idea what your problem is with me. We were besties, and then one day, you decided to turn me into a boogeyman for no reason. Whatever it is, get over it. I'll never get over it. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. You'll never know a moment's peace until I have my revenge. Wow, she really was insane. Stripes and polka dots. Also, the whole evil villain speech, that was weird too. Good luck with world domination or whatever, crazy pants. I started to walk away when suddenly I tripped and pulled on the rope to catch my fall. In an instant, I was hit with a cascade of feathers, honey, and glitter. Heather laughed when suddenly the net fell and snatched her up into the air. We both looked totally ridiculous, but at least the prank was a partial success. Was it just me or was that a smile on Heather's face? Smile or not, Heather had told me she wasn't gonna let this go. I needed to be ready. A few weeks went by with nothing happening. I knew Heather was trying to lure me into a false sense of security. She must be planning something big. There was a big fall festival coming up. Even though I was a total summer girl, I loved the changing leaves, crisp autumn air, and pumpkin candles. I couldn't wait for the festival. And that's why I knew Heather would make her move there to ruin it for me. The day of the festival, I was on high alert. Babe, why do you keep checking your makeup? You look great. I'm not checking my makeup. I'm watching my six. Then I saw her hiding behind the donut stand. That's it? I've put up with your stupid little games all summer. And clearly you're not growing up anytime soon. I'm breaking up with you. Also, I lied. Your makeup doesn't look great. You take that back. Have fun being at the festival all alone, loser. Hey, pretty boy. James and I turned at the same time. Suddenly, Heather dumped her pumpkin spice latte on his head. He was about to scream when I took my candy apple and jammed it into his mouth. There, definitely an improvement. Agreed. James stalked off furiously, and Heather and I laughed. You stuck up for me. Well, we did used to be friends. Heather, I'm not lying. I really don't know why you started hating me. You really don't? You set your mom up with my dad. He left my mom and moved to the rainforest with your mom. I was shocked. Heather, I, I didn't even know they were together. I thought your dad was in Europe. And why would you think I set them up? You used to always bring your mom to our play dates and then leave her alone with my dad because she was less strict than my dad. I wasn't playing matchmaker. I was 11. To my surprise, Heather hugged me. I'm sorry. I, listen, your brother came to me last night with tears in his eyes. He begged me to stop. I enjoyed it, but yeah, it was sad. He what? Listen, he's right. I, I never should have blamed you. It was so hard, and I guess focusing all my sadness and anger on you was easier than dealing with my broken family. I know you had your own struggles too, and I'm, I'm sorry if I made things worse. I missed you. I missed you too. I have to go and kill my brother, so excuse. Come here. What do you say we focus on a couple of those cinnamon donuts? 